trying to sign into Google. <laughs> Hey, I can't, I can't help your, uh, your tech unsavviness, my friend. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm lost. We're streaming now, by the way. So anything you say can and will be held against you, in a court of law, <laughs> court of twip streamers. Uh, yeah, there we are. Look, we're live. Good. It looks beautiful. Hey, everybody, welcome, 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 uh, twip pro members to the first this is the first live stream of 2022 by the way on this week in photo it's insane this is historic yeah and it's also our That's first good. live stream streaming out of the the community the new community versus the mighty networks community so lots of firsts going on did you figure out your tech situation so i gotta embarrass you troy <laughs> Maybe you don't know this. Let me put the camera. Me. Maybe you don't know this, but Troy did not know that you could right-click on a tab in Chrome and mute that tab. He just learned that today. Look at that. Look at that. That is the face of somebody that has been enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So good of you to point that out, Frederick. I'll make sure that uh, anything I do, forward, you. Will. you know, in our streams, um, you know, Go ahead. as you begin to learn that new Nikon that you're going to be getting, I'll I'll make sure to point certain things out. You know, I'm I've I've I think I'm like last when we spoke yesterday. I think I was like 20 Nikon videos in. I'm like 40 in now on learning. Now I just want to get. I just want to jump straight to my Z9 now. I just I just want to just get that and be done with it. So. Uh, oh Hey, Amy Brooks. Amy Brooks in the chat. Hey, everybody. I'm trying to get. <laughs> you can't so... figure out how to use a chat now. <laughs> no, so 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 for people that don't stream, uh, and and you don't realize like the control center that we have in front of us, so that so that we can talk to each other, look at the photos, have YouTube open, muted and paused, and then the chat window open so that we can chat. And I haven't done this in a while, so I was a little behind on the curve getting it set up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. And truth be told, I did go through a couple of test rounds yesterday just to make sure <laughs> today I wasn't going to hit any snags or be embarrassed. So, yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. We are good. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's dive into this critique, uh, which was the number 177, Winter. And for those of you who aren't familiar, I am sharing the new TWIP community, which I think is amazing. I am really excited about it. Amazing. Amazing. All right, here we are. So this is kind of Inception-ish because this video right here that you're looking at on the screen, this guy right here, is where we're streaming into right now. So if you are on the community and you press this play button, you will see us. And you'll kind of see me talking about this video. <laughs> it's so weird. It's very weird. Yeah, and it streams right in the feed, right? Yeah, so right here. For, for yep. somebody who, yeah, you don't even have to leave. You can just sit right there. Yep, and it's you should cool. have gotten a reminder. If you had RSVP'd, I believe you should have got a reminder that this was happening. Or if you just pop into the community, you can just come over to Photo Critiques and play it. And that's the same, just, if, just FYI, if we go back to the Photo Critiques area, we're scheduled out through March uh for these critiques but if you notice we're in winter now today if i go to the next one seascape the event is already there if you click play on it it's not going to play because it's waiting for us to start streaming into it but there's no comments available for you to stick any images into it yet um, once we complete this one then this one seascape will open up and you'll be able to submit your your uh images into the comments on that one for the next critique easy seamless simple but here we go. Let's easy, dive into easy. this first one. You ready to do this? First one is f six days ago from Craig Stamfley. He says, as winter is still six months away. Always, when I'm reading Craig's comments or his captions, I always feel like I have to read them in an Australian accent. But then my, <laughs> my Australian accent sounds like British Cockney, so I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Uh, he says, winter is still six months away. I have re-edited an older file to share, uh, looking west from the Fall Creek Ski Resort in Victoria. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. That looks it. ominous. That looks like, a, looks like a sandstorm in Dubai or something. It does. Yeah. I'm, immediately, I looked at this, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. You know, if I didn't have a, a description, I wouldn't know that it's snow-covered. Um, 
I, you know, right off the bat, I think it would look good in black and white. Mm -hmm. I think that that's that that's what I need. Um, but with that said, I, I love where the mountain range is. I love that horizon. I love that it's in the lower thirds. I think that it's it's amazing. It's really about those clouds and and kind of that sunlight coming through is uh, is really really cool. I do wonder, though, I don't know if, Frederick, if you see it, but across the top of the hill, it looks a little dark. You know, um, is that actual lighting or is that mm. something from somebody burning in the sky? Hmm. It is that? a little halo. There's a little halo on the ridge here, too. So I wonder, is that is that I don't know. What is that? Do you see that like a halo on the ridge line? Yeah. And, and this this is sort of highlights one of those things where you know, we look at an image and it could be completely in 100% natural, but it looks like a Photoshop mistake kind of, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really not fair to the maker that we're like, well, did you Photoshop that? Is that a bad burning job? Right. But at right. the same time in the critique, that's kind of what we're talking about, so. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I love it. Ominous. So you would, your main thing would be, you would change it to uh, black and white? I, I would or or I would lean into the color a little bit more like I might desaturate the mountains a little bit so you don't have too much of that blue haze going on in there. And then, you know, where the sky has that sort of that warm tone, maybe from the sun coming through, I would lean into one of those tones or the other to, to really, you know, make it feel more like winter because the warm clouds don't feel wintry to me. Um, maybe take the whole thing with a little bit of a blue tinge to it or something or try monochromatic and see how that goes. Mm hmm. Cool. And the border and the key line treatment, you're good with those? Beautiful. Of course. Beautiful. <laughs> Everything needs a little <laughs> salt on it, right? Everything. <laughs> no no food is is delicious without a little bit of salt on it. Yeah. And then in this case, I think it's fine. Perfect. I think I think the black border and the the white key line, like you said, would probably have been more effective if the image was black and white as well, right? Because then it kind of just all works together when i see a shot like this with the thick black border i always think of like the really big print in a museum or some big corporate lobby or something that's just gigantic <laughs> and impossible and beautiful and flawless so when yeah. i see this i think about that it's very nice yeah, uh, yeah. in the chat yeah. we've got la Dutarino, we've got jim peters craig stampley's in there spicy jello is you you're in there steven sharf what's up steven in there cool Awesome. All right, Craig Stanfley, thank you for sharing that. Yes. Next up is Amy Brooks, also in the chat. Oh, we got to say nice things because Amy's in the chat. So, uh, <laughs> it's Amy, we always say nice things. <laughs> I know. Uh, she said, I shared this earlier, but we we'll love some honest critique feedback because I know I'm going to shoot these again um, the next time I see, next time it snows. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. these are. Would you say the same thing about this one with the black and white treatment? Because it's already monochromatic. It just it looks like it's monochromatic with like a like a blue tone on it. No, no, this one this one is there. I mean, this one has that very subtle gray, cool tone to it that I think really gives us that sense of winter. Um, you know, you take an image like this and play with the tonal range, right? Like warm it up a little bit, cool it down a little bit, and just kind of see how it makes you feel when you look at it. It really changes the mood. So for the sense and the topic of winter, um, it's really nice to see a little bit of that cold tone in this. And I, and I really enjoy that. I think the thing that, uh, really gets me on this image, and I've already talked to Amy about it, um, is it's off center. And I think this mm -hmm. is an image that's really sort of screaming to be symmetrical, right? Yeah, I agree. So yeah. A, a little more space to the right or a little bit less space on the left. I think it would look better with more space on the right because it would sort of give those trees some breathing room. Um, and if and if you were going to go back and shoot these again, you know, I would try to get closer with a wider angle lens. Uh, this is something that her and I chatted about a little bit. I feel like the trees in the background are, are compressing in on our subject. And you can kind of see that the background horizon is a little bit sharp. I can see the detail of the trees there, which I like. Mm -hmm. But I would want to make that island of trees stand out even more. So the way you would do that is you would either shoot with a shallower depth of field or move in closer with a wider lens and mm -hmm. get closer to the to the ground, maybe, and just kind of see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. My, my only two comments on this 
uh, in addition to what you said, we're, we're reemphasizing, yeah, I would want to see that I, my brain wants those that patch of trees to be centered. Um, but I also want more space around them just to emphasize the loneliness or the isolation of that little oasis of trees in the middle of that snow field. So I want to see more of the, the supporting environment and those beautiful with those pine trees back there in the far background. I want to see mm -hmm. more of those uh, a little bit. So that not that much. Maybe if maybe it's even adding as much space to the right side of the screen that's already on the left side and to balance it out just to give it space around it. So, you know, we're looking at the middle. Other than that, right. great right. shot. Absolutely. Love it. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the nice thing is, is that, you know, these aren't too far from Amy. So um, she can visit these a lot. And mm -hmm. I would, I think these are fantastic. So good, good eye, good catch. And, you know, good job for getting out there. I love this image. Love it. Cool. Cool. And La Duterina in the chat is actually Karen Sweeney. She says it's Karen. So hey, Karen, welcome. Oh, cool. All right. Coming up next is Speak of the Devil. <laughs> and she shall appear. Karen Sweeney <laughs> says, entry for winter critique number 177. I hate it when snow covers my <laughs> Okay. I said I was going to read this in my radio voice. So here goes. <clears throat> entry for winter critique number 177. I hate it when snow covers my nuts. There you go. Done. <laughs> You know, I don't. I don't think you enunciated your ends properly. I'm not doing it again. That's being... it. Not doing it. <laughs> you can talk about the snow in your nuts if you want to. I am not talking about that anymore. I don't All even right. know where snow is around me. I don't go to the snow. Snow's cold. Yeah, I don't like Southern cold. California, dude. You don't even own a pair of long johns, do you? You don't even know what long johns well, are, not, do you? That's not true. Anything below sixty degrees, I start layering. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, let's look at La, La Duterina's, uh, a.k.a. Karen's cold gray swir squirrel. What do you think of this guy? I, I think I think I think this is really cute. I really I really love this. And the title is is super fun, too. Um, I, I, I love the treatment. I love the key line. Everything about that really brings me into the center of the image. And I think that the whole harmony there is nice and balanced. I really like sort of the soft left quadrant. Uh, the foreground being a slightly out of focus, creating some foreground, and then the squirrel is our middle ground. And we got this nice soft background. All, all I could suggest is <clears throat> do a little bit of treatment to the squirrel, maybe the eyes a little bit, bring those highlights out a tad. Um, I know Karen has watched uh, Joshua in his stream, and I know uh, Joshua does a lot of treatment with the eyes. And it really, really, really makes a difference just in humans and animals as well. So I would mm -hmm. I would give that a try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that, you know, about adding a catch light in there just to make that eye pop out a little bit. What I'm, I'm curious, like this kind of shot, what lens did, she, did Karen say what lens she used on this? No, Karen, let us know in the chat what lens you use. I'm curious. I'm guessing. What do you think? 7200 on this? Yeah, I think you're probably sub 200, you know, 28 kind of thing. It's it's we're getting some compression there, so it's a little bit longer than normal lens, so you're beyond probably 80 to 100 even even longer. <clears throat> I would think if you're any longer than that, you would get that plant would be really crushed up behind it, but it's it's a longer lens, right? It's a telephoto lens cuz you could feel the compression, but it's nice that that the squirrel is in focus, you know, one ear to the other, so there's enough depth of field in there that we don't get our subject kind of falling soft yeah yeah i like it this guy is this guy looks too comfortable oh karen says it's a, <laughs> it's a 200 to 500 she shot this with cool yeah yeah he he looks well insulated this squirrel he looks like <laughs> he uh totally he's had some snacks <laughs> he's warm that's me after after a big meal right there that's it very cool love it all right yeah. karen thank you for that and Michael's up next. Uh, Michael says, my entry for the winter photo critique. This is one of my infrared images from my recent morning winter hike in the Rocky Mountain National Park. Oh, Michael Rhino. You know, um, Mike, Michael, you may want to put your last name in there only because we have like, what, three or four Michaels in here now? Yeah, at least, yeah. Please, yeah, yeah, put your last name in there. So I was, I was like, that looks like a Michael Rhino, but I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure. 
But now that I know it's infrared, of course it's infrared. <laughs> Because you contaminated him. I mean, influenced him to go into infrared. Oh, uh, man. All right, Mr. Infrared. Give us give us your critique on this infrared shot. Um, It's wonderful. I mean, just because it's infrared, it gets extra points. So very good there. Um, inf whether it's infrared or any other image, you've got to really kind of look at the the highlight to shadow range within your image and, and where is the light drawing your eye and how do you read through the image. So for me, I love the fact that the peaks in the upper right are kind of getting more of the sunlight. And I see that as, as everything else is in shadow. But being in shadow, it softens the contrast. The foreground becomes a little bit more mundane. And so what I would do is I would I would take an image like this and I would work on the the tonal layers that you can create here, right? So like in the foreground, like up into the base of those trees, bring the highlights in those midtones um, up a bit. So the snow is a little bit brighter, not a ton, not like sunlights on them, right? But just a little bit brighter, keeping the contrast. And then we fall into the shadow of the mountain and then we get the layer of light on the mountain on the right. And then we get the cloud. So we create this light, dark, light, dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do yeah, if I could make it there. <laughs> You've been there, haven't you? I thought you were didn't you. You were there, right? I've been in Colorado. I've been to, I've been to Michael's house. I haven't been there where oh, this is. Oh, to this spot. This is, okay. this is great, though. Yeah. Good, yeah. good choice of foreground. Um, I love that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what he was shooting with this. What, like, see now I'm, real, I'm my brain is all interested now in let me put back on this for a second. my brain is all interested now in um because i know michael shoots michael rhino shoots nikon so now i'm like what lens was this one because i have a bunch of lenses in my shopping cart right now so like i want to know yeah am i making i need confirmation bias come on you know give me that yeah yeah give well we know lenses. we know it was the z5 converted to infrared because that's the, the camera he's converted to the z to infrared and it's probably a 24 to 70. So. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. The kit lens? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Not the 2.8? Yeah. Oh. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Up next is Phil. Phil Lewenthal is up. All right. This is interesting. Look at this. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. I, uh... So so this is this is a Curtis Jones minimalist shot because I, I looked at this shot and I'm thinking if you were to take those human forms out of that, you would have no sense of scale in this shot. You have right. no idea what what you're looking at. You put those little figures in there and suddenly it's a whole different ball game. I love that. It's huge. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, having been somebody who has spent a lot of time in the desert and on the sand dunes, I immediately thought this was like a sand dune and that that guy was like falling off his motorcycle, right? Like I didn't, it didn't even <laughs> dawn on me that it was snow. And then I had to zoom in and I'm like, oh, they're skiers. Like, that's crazy. Why would you do that? Um, but I love the image. I, I really, really love it. Um, one of my favorite aspects, my app aspects asbestos. is you're trying the to say guy asbestos. In the top, <laughs> right the guy in the top left corner i love how he's so tight in that corner yeah because you don't really see that one you know it, it, you see him first but you don't really understand like why 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 would you shove him way up there and you realize like oh he's looking at this dude way down here in the corner who's actually mm -hmm. your subject yeah um you know so the other I, th I really... the other interesting thing about this as you as I look at it are this thing is it's full of triangles triangle shapes you know from the clouds in the upper right to even the body of this guy I mean there's triangles here the landmass down here is triangles the lines yep. in here create a series of triangles there's a lot of triangles going on kind of like a cat if you look at a cat absolutely cat, cats yeah. are are made of triangles right <laughs> <So>. <laughs> they are. I, you know, for an image like this, I would probably work on um, bringing up the highlights or the, 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 the highlight tones and the mid tones of the snow a little bit more. I realize it was probably in shadow and that's fine, but I would, I would work on bringing that up a little bit to create some more contrast between the, the snow face, the mountain face and the skier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously keeping it in that natural realm, but it just feels flat to me. 
So you'd pop it out a little more, add a little bit more, what, contrast, clarity? If he, if he increases the contrast, he's going to start losing detail in the, sh in the clouds, right? Right. That's why, that's why I, I don't ever use contrast, because contrast takes your highlights and goes one way, and your shadows, and they go another. Mm -hmm. um, the shadows are fine, but it's the highlights on the mountain face, the snow. I would bring that mid-tone to highlight range up, and that would leave the shadows alone, but that would bring the highlights out and create more contrast in the snow, and it would they would feel less sort of muted gray. Okay, got it. Yeah, something of that nature. Something you know, play play with that a little bit. Yeah, like it's it. easier to demo that stuff than it is to say it. But oh well, do it. Do it in the community. You have, <laughs> you have Loom installed. You know, just do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, you get lost in the shot. Very cool, Phil. Thank you. It's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Next shot is James Glenny says winter moon halo. Don't see these very often here. At least the temperature needs to be pretty low combined with a lot of humidity suspended in the air with long exposures. You can get an actual rainbow in the ring, but I didn't have my tripod with me. Of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tripod is always where you don't need it to be. That's why you buy two. Keep one in the car. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like Hal from 2001 space odyssey it looks like the little <laughs> <It> totally <does. laughs> you know you see how i saw a supernova when i first saw that so i was like yeah this would look it would look like about seven minutes how long does it take light to get from the sun to us seven eight minutes yeah eight yeah. minutes uh before we were, were dead before the shockwave hits us um cool i like this i like i personally i like this the simplicity of this shot um i see a little detritus here i don't know if these are stars or what am i looking at there see those little, those little, those little points of light yeah those it's in full there. Of stars the right stars it's full of stars yeah it's full, full of stars. stars it's full of stars <laughs> <laughs> i still don't understand that movie just say <laughs> you're not supposed to no i don't understand it no. um we're talking about 2001 a space odyssey by the way um what do you what do you think what are your thoughts you know, I, I I really dig the image, and I think that one of the things that's that's so fascinating about it is that it's so it's so abstract and it's so not obvious what it is right off the bat, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's one of those things that you, m most of us may not photograph, right? We may not just you know point our camera straight at the moon and try to get that little ring. I mean, I've seen that ring a thousand times. I've never thought to photograph it. Like this is great. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering though, would it be how it would look to bring the exposure down so that the stars tended to pop a little bit, the blacks went more black, if if you could still keep that ring and sort of increase the depth, right? Because right now I understand that there's a haze in the sky and and you kind of get that, but um, I'd like to see those stars come out a little bit more. Yeah. But I, I dig it just the way it is. Those. I don't know how I feel about those stars. I know they're stars, and I like <laughs> the fact that they're stars. But at the other side of it is this: the whole supernova, you know, in the middle, as I like to say, it is. It is the main. <laughs> it's the main subject. And I, my, as a photographer, I'm like, oh, there's dust spots. Why are those dust spots in here messing up my my supernovae here? Yes, but here's the thing, Frederick. Once you start to go out and do uh you know night photography with a camera that's capable you'll find that those stars are not just noise <laughs> troy, troy miller shifts into full-on <laughs> condescension mode before our I eyes did. you see it you see it the condescension start oozing out of this man <laughs> normally uh, frederick edits all that stuff out you guys never hear that but he i know and I, I lower the bass on my audio and increase the treble on his so that i have a deeper <laughs> <laughs> no i don't do that of course i don't do that would i do that <laughs> oh man. okay well cool hey uh, i'm i'm a fan of this one would you so this one clearly is not black and white i see hints of tone in here two questions would you shift it to a black and white uh treatment and there's a border on this and a key line that you have to kind of look look hard to see are those is that a good treatment? Does it need a border? If does it need a white border? You know, kind of pull out the the, the whites of this. What what do you think? No, I, I love the border the way it's done. It's nice and subtle. It doesn't need you know a, a drastic key line right there because <clears throat> there really is no 
very little pure black in the image that would blend with the, the major black key line. So putting that little gray one in there is a really nice way of separating, you know, the subject from <clears throat> that dark black line, which is really kind of what you're doing anyway. Um, I, I would definitely try it as black and white. I try everything as black and white because the, the shapes change and, mm. you know, the form factor comes out. I'm also looking at at ways that you could that you could crop this and, you know, make it square, take out the branches on the left. So it's literally just this nice uh, group of trees across the bottom and you get this nice, wonderful, you know, circle like dead center. Um, that's what I mean. Those are the things that I would I would try to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Moving right along, thank you, James Glenny, for Winter Moon Halo. By the way, Mark Charette is making an appearance in the chat. What's up, Mark Charette? Welcome. Hey. All right. <laughs> Every time I welcome someone to the chat, their image somehow is the next one that we're going to critique. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Mark Charette's image. You can find Mark at virtualtourphotographer.com.au. Uh, he says, the last time I saw a bird in Canadian weather. Nice. Oh, look at this guy. Nice. Is this a crow or a raven? I can't tell the difference. I don't know. I think it's a raven, right? Is it a raven? Does ravens I... have a little hook on their upper beak? I'm sure oh, there's a I'm... name for the upper beak, too. I don't know. No idea. <laughs> it's a cool bird. I like it. <laughs> it looks like he has an attitude. <laughs> he's got two. He's like, he's dude, it's cold. Uh -huh. It's cold. He's yeah. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> he's looking at that. I squirrel. mean, but but challenging shot, right? Black bird on white snow. I mean, uh, that's that's the worst the worst situation you can throw at a camera, right? Other than black bird in dark black closet. <laughs> right. 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 Ooh, that's a that sounds like a good book title. Um, oh, yeah. I, I really like this. Uh, I think this is. I think this is really, really neat. I, I think we have. I don't think we need as much space on the right as we have. Um, <clears throat> I really feel like this is sort of that simple, iconic image, and you know, maybe shortening the right side, but eh, not too much. And I don't know if it's just my monitor or the way that they're coming through in the stream or from the web, but it, the snow again is is gray, and you know, snow is white with a little bit of texture. So bring that snow up and get it just before it, it blows out mm -hmm. you know give it that white i mean it, it can be gray obviously if the if it's very overcast but you know give the give the give the um the snow some sparkle polish yeah. the snow a little bit and again like you said i don't know you know it may be an artifact of uh well i'm looking at i'm looking at it on the site here i'm like i'm not looking at the stream um on the site I'd want to see, and I don't even know if this is possible, depending on just the it, the real life coloration of this bird. Um, but I want to see more detail in the feather action. You know, like kind of like we see on some of Joshua's shots, where we're seeing almost forensic levels of detail in the in the scales and whatever manner of creature he's shooting. Now I want to see that when I see a bird like this, I want to see I want to see the the ridges and the in the in the feathers and the eye you know all that stuff i want that level of detail you think do you think troy that this is that's possible in a shot like this with considering the lighting conditions mark was shooting in of course yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely <clears throat> absolutely our our cameras and moreover the the software that we're using to process our images have the capability of of accessing that data <clears throat> as long as you didn't overexpose it by more than a stop that that detail is definitely there so um this is this is a great shot and then i would definitely play with it some more cool cool by the way uh la duderina in the chat says it's a raven trust me mark charette says crow in the snow so <laughs> steven sharf says it looks like a raven to me mark crows have a thinner beak i don't know it's a bird now <laughs> now we need to now we need to know how to distinguish the difference between a crow and a raven at first sight yes i mean you know it's important i, I would argue the word need in that sentence but yeah <laughs> we we would like to know i was trying to give the kids something to do frederick oh my god see that see see just going to record <laughs> condescension again he called you <laughs> he called you all kids did you hear that <laughs> i wasn't talking about my friends from twip 
<laughs> I'm talking about like my neighbors. Uh huh. Yeah. You hear the condescension? It's still oozing. <laughs> still. Poor Margie. <laughs> All right. Moving next. Nora Zanotnis is here. She says, waiting for a sunrise. It was a lovely winter morning with hoarfro hoarfrost. Uh, the cranes roost here overnight, and when the sun rises, they fly to the local farmer's fields looking for grain that might have been missed during the harvest. Cool. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That that's is cool. Look at those cool. colors. It's, it's like those colors, like a hint of purple or fuchsia or something in there. But it's just it's just right to give you that that kind of mood. Love yeah, it. yeah. This is this is really really wonderful. I I love the fact that you've got those three cranes kind of away from the herd, um, or the gaggle or the whatever. Um, and uh, what what it does make me think though is I love the tones. I love the soft colors. Um, I wouldn't make it black and white or do any of that. I love the the contrast between the blue snow and the warm reflection of the sky. I think that's really great. But I would, I would trim the cropping a little bit. Um, I would crop out that little island in the lower left just and then take a little bit off the left side. And I, I think what that would do is that would really bring a strong focus on those three cranes that would now be in the lower left hand corner, basically our foreground. And they're the story. They're the heroes of this image. Um, and then I love how everything just kind of falls out of focus in the back with the haze and the distance and everything. Yeah, yeah, love, love that. It reminds me of a Scott Bourne shot where he, I think he called it Cranes in the Mist or something, but it's, a, mm -hmm. it's one of his better shots. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, this is, this, is, this is really awesome. I hope that there's a bunch of images from this. And uh, if I had this anywhere near me, I would put it in my calendar and I would be hitting this location as often as they were there. <laughs> You know, I'd be camped out. I would even put up with the cold. <laughs> wow, that's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. And this would look good in infrared, too. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I wonder. So what? how would this look? Like, with the all the all the lighter parts of the image, I'm guessing, that are reflective of infrared, like the foliage or the trees or whatever, would go white, I'm guessing, and the birds would go darker? Is that... Is that... Uh the way it works? Yeah, so so the water itself <clears throat> is infrared light. The snow mm -hmm. is ultraviolet. So the snow would go dark. The trees themselves would go would go a little bit more contrasty and dark. But then you would get this really wonderful contrasting shapes of the birds against this this brighter area, and it would create these layers of light and dark and light and dark and light and dark. It wouldn't have the same feel that you have here, where you have this nice tonal range of color and sort of the sense of cold and, you know, the river, but it would, it, it just, it, it's different than even just going like pure black and white. You always yeah. got to have both though. You got to have both. When are we going to see a camera that camera? you can, when are we going to see a camera where you can do that? Where, I mean, is it, it it's good. I know you got to, you know, physically change the sensor, but will we see that you think in the future, a camera that you can switch to infrared or that has an infrared mode and a visible light spectrum mode? I don't know. Leica might do it. It'll be 50 grand at 20 <laughs> megapixels, you know, so. Yeah. If you really and they'll tell it. you it's better, of course. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different show. That's a different show. That's a different show. Okay. <laughs> Not gear. Okay. Not gear. Not gear. All right. Is that it? I think that, oh, show more comments. Let's see. I think that's it. It's not it. No. Me. Stephen Scharf is here. Stephen Scharf. Oh, wow. Yosemite Valley during a whiteout blizzard. All right. Oh, Look wow. at this. See, again, again, the heavy, thick border on a shot like this. I, I see this and I see wall print hanging with a, with a real border in a gallery or corporate setting or something like that, where it's just... You walk in and there's just massive print that you get lost in like this. That's where I think this works. So it works. I think it works really well with this. And again, black and white with a thick black border, they, the interplay of those, those tonal values really works for me. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think of the shot? Oh, this is, this is great. This is how your sense, Yosemite should be photographed. I mean, I don't think anybody should shoot color of Yosemite ever. It should always be black <laughs> and white. <laughs> in honor of Ansel Adams, just always black and white, you know. Yeah. Or, or at least like, you know, a certain month would just say, okay, only black and white images. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
so you know to me this is just that that incredibly traditional outdoor you know monochromatic scene where it's just really about the shapes like we know they're trees uh we get it but in in reality it's just sort of this shape and form and you know nature has a has a voice of its own and i think that when you when you shoot in black and white it really sort of comes out that you, you just don't get the same in color yeah um my my tendency and and i'm not i'm not sold on this but my tendency is to want to remove part of the left side i feel like there's just a lot of negative space in the sky over there and i think those taller trees are the heroes so i don't know i, I might play with cropping it just on my own and kind of see where i land but not not 100 percent either way Yes, Stephen Sharp. What, I forget what you're shooting with. You're shooting with a uh, Fuji, right? Stephen's a Fuji, yeah, yeah, Fuji shooter, Fuji, so yeah. this is more than likely a Fuji shot. <clears throat> so APS-C. So he's got plenty of resolution here too. Mm -hmm. really yeah, nice. yeah, really nice shot. And you know, this is one of those things where when you go out into nature or, or you know, you're photographing anything, you gotta you gotta really look at the scene and realize like where are my my layers, my sense of size, my sense of depth. Um, if, if this was, if this didn't have those pine trees in there that go dark, the foreground wouldn't be able to stand out. If there wasn't fog, then the pine trees wouldn't be separated from the background, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you stand and look at a scene and you're like, well, that's really beautiful, but it may be flat as a photograph. You know, this is not flat, you know? So that's, that's the kind of stuff you point your camera at. So just kind of dissect the image, you know, analyze it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Steven in the chat says he didn't want to cut off the trees. Uh, also, he shot it with his Fuji X-H1. Um, you know, I'm looking at this, and as I as I get absorbed into the image, you know, you see the, the I'm guessing this is El Capitan in the background here, or some granite structure back there. Um, that, I want to see more of that back there, because that is, like you're saying, that's another layer of depth. So three layers of depth in the shot, or technically four if you count the sky. So you got the sky, the the mountains in the back, the layer of trees, and then the snow in the foreground. I just want to see mm -hmm. more of these, more of the, the mountains back there, because just how those are you know, obscured slightly by mist or fog and, and kind of slightly out of focus back there, I think that adds a layer of depth to the contrasty trees in the midground. I just want to see right. more of those. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is, you know, this is one of those kind of scenes that we could all be standing right there and I'm pretty sure we would all take a different photo. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, which is, which is what's so cool. Oh yeah. He yeah. says El Capitan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have an idea where this is shot from. Yeah. Very uh -huh. cool. Yeah. I know that spot. Ah, oh, makes me want to go out there. Day trip. See, I could take a day trip out there, Troy Miller. <laughs> day, week. You could not. You couldn't get out of your chair for a day trip. Come on. I totally like, could get over there. <laughs> are you? Are you, wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that I'm stuck in my office like a veal, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or I just don't have the will to go? I can get over there. That's a uh, that's ninety Jeez. minutes from where I sit right now. Roughly, I think, right, Stephen? That's about 90 minutes from, uh, maybe maybe two hours from you, but 90 minutes, I think, roughly from, from where I am. So, Depending on the weather, as, as Stephen and I know well, uh, if you have a little bit of snow in the past, <laughs> you're not going to get there for days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know what? That's a twip adventure we have to seriously think about putting on the books uh, for when the world hey, opens up. Because that, that restaurant that, that you guys arrives. keep raving about, right? No, the Nikon's going everywhere. That Nikon is the Nikons, the Nikon super friend twins <laughs> of the, <laughs> the Z9. Uh, and uh, do you call it Z? Everyone's calling it Z9. Z9, Z9. Z9. Mark Charette, is it Z or Z? <laughs> so Mark, Mark has Canadian and Australian DNA in him, so uh, he could be our authority. Look, I don't work for Nikon, so I can call it whatever I want. <laughs> All right, Stephen Scharf, great shot, man. Any final thoughts on this one before we move on to the last one? Nope, nope. I think we, I think we covered it. It's a, it's a wonderful yep. job. Very cool. All right, so the last one is. Uh, oh, Stephen says it's two and a half hours from me. Yeah. Um, so let's bring up the previous community, Mighty Networks. 
Oh, it feels so dated now. Oh. <clears throat> so we'll go into Dude, groups. It's icky. Oh, I feel like going back to your high school after you've gone to college. Uh, <laughs> so, general photo critiques. Oh, who built this? Oh, I did. Yeah, I don't know. I'm already there. I don't know what's what's wrong with you. Oh, I'm streaming over here, okay? So <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Mike. Yeah, Mike is the Mm -hmm. Low, the sole submitter for Mighty. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yeah. This is uh. This is a really. This is a really wonderful scene. I. I. I think. I'm trying to think about. Oh, that's Upper Yosemite and Lower Yosemite Falls, looking across the the plain. So that's. I love cool. the clouds. I've hiked at the top of the that. Top. Look at the clouds up here. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's it. Really, something. <sighs> Okay, so I, I mean, initially, I love the scene. I definitely love the mountains covered in snow, and I, I, I really love that sense. The vignetting that's happening on the on the ground in the foreground is really, really, really heavy, um, and that bright white spot in the foreground, I think, needs to come down. I'm, I'm struggling with the sky. It doesn't. Feel, I mean, I guess it could be real. It doesn't feel real, which would make it even more amazing. What is being what? Real. What is it? What feels unrealistic about you? About it? I I see what you're saying, but I'm I want to see what what data points push you in that direction. So the, the the fact that we have this fog or this haze encompassing the top of the mountains, kind of coming down, and then but yet it's a I can see blue sky through it. Kind of feels weird, mm. right? Like I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of off. But let let's let's not even as let's you know not even talk about the sky. I, I love the you know the tree line and the the falls and the images framed with those trees. I just struggle with the really 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 heavy vignette that we have going on in the yeah. bottom and the bright white that's landing in the middle. That's really where the distraction point is for me. I think that I think you could almost you could almost crop out all that foreground. We don't even need it. Yeah, yeah. Strong Start vignettes. Yeah, strong vignettes are tricky, right? Because you want you want yeah. You know, I mean, the purpose of the vignette is to draw the eye into the middle of this this frame, right? Um, but if you go heavy handed with it, it starts feeling a little bit like what it feels like when you have hypoxia. If you ever had hypoxia, lack of oxygen, and you start getting ready right. to pass out, and you start getting a tunnel vision, that's what it looks like. You know, the corners of your sight start going dark, and pretty soon you're out. That's what, that's what it starts feeling. So you want to avoid that. So yeah, yeah, I agree on that. And I also wonder about the color treatment, right? Because this is, I like the bluish, because it feels cold and frigid and, and chilly and all that. I know that's probably mm -hmm. what, you know, the artist wanted would Mike want it. Um, but at the same time, and we keep going back to this, especially for these landscape shots like this, and especially in Yosemite, black and white on a shot like this, is the color serving the image here? Or would it be better served if you just remove that color and concentrate on the tonal range and the Christmas of those mountains and the snow on there and the snow in the foreground and all that and make it make it Ansel pop like that without the bluish in there? Yeah, you know, you know, this is this is one of those kind of images that <clears throat> I would take it to um, I would take it to black and white. And then I would look at the shape and the form within the image and I would find my heroes. I would find the parts in the image uh, looking at it under black and white that I want to draw my 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 viewers into um, a good a good exercise is to set your cameras uh, to the tones of black and white. So when you look through your color, your color camera and you look at the world, do it in black and white. You'll see things totally different that you didn't see before. You'll see shapes and you'll see forms. And those are the subtleties that lie under the color. Right. So in an image like this, I would convert it to black and white and I would look at it and then I might go back in and I might do like a duo tone or something and bring some of that really subtle coolness back in because that's what makes us feel like it's cold, right? Yeah, Not yeah. just pure black and white. And uh, it would it would be interesting. I mean, it would be it's a fun image. It's a, it's really majestic and and uh, it's a really good view, you know, so. Yeah, it's really nice. 
Yeah, I like it again. But this shot, this is a it's a good point. So this shot, many of the other shots that we saw had the key line border treatment on it. Would this one benefit, or would it be a detractor from a shot like this to put a border key line treatment on it? You know, ultimately, I think that every image needs a border in a presentation scenario like this because here you have this image on this pure white backlit screen background, right? Mm -hmm. And the highlights bleed into the background. That's just the way it is. So, you know, think about how your image is going to be presented and then decide if you need a key line. I think that a border and a key line on an image like this would benefit the image because it would separate it from that really, really bright white border that we have on by default because we're looking at it in a browser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting comments in the chat too. Um, Steven says that this was the he shot this that this the shot that Stephen Sharp did was done at the same time this one was done. They were standing next to each other. Um, oh, nice. And yeah, and uh, what was oh uh, Karen says it looks like high altitude cirrus clouds but down low. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, how do high yeah how do high altitude cirrus clouds get to that altitude? So Mike Doran, if you're watching this you know comment in the chat and let us know or, or in the comments in the uh in the critique yep. post and let us know what the deal is with those clouds are they real are they memorex was it the blizzard you know are those serious or serious imposters so yeah and you know just because somebody thinks that you may have done some photoshop work to it doesn't doesn't necessarily detract from the fact that you captured an amazing event um mm -hmm. there's been there's been plenty of times that i've been out photographing landscapes and i look at the clouds and the clouds have these repeating patterns in it and i'm thinking wow if i enter that in competition they're gonna think i clone those in because it's this repeating pattern but it's mm -hmm. in nature right yeah and yeah. so we have to also be considerate of that if we're going to take images into competition or we're going to take them into a sales environment or we're going to show them to other photographers they might think those things so mm -hmm. yeah. but that's just that's just us dissecting you know yeah <laughs> and, what we and the do. other the other piece of of uh, critiquing, you know, because I know we've gotten our critiquing has suffered some criticism itself, right? But the other part of critiquing, especially when we say, you know, something, oh, did you Photoshop those clouds in or did you not? You know, like you said, that it's not necessarily a negative thing. I think it's if there's a question if you Photoshopped or not, and it's not obvious that you Photoshopped, then you're then that's almost a compliment because it's like, was that real? It's like looking at a 3D photo or a 3D image. And I think it's a compliment if someone says, is that, was that real or was it 3D? As we're getting closer to with some of the technologies out there. I think it's, it's, right. it's, we're at that line now, whereas before we weren't, right? We were kind of like, ah, obvious. Like your clouds when you showed Renee Robin your clouds that time, right? <laughs> <You're> so, <laughs> so close cool. to making it through without Clearly, that. Clearly <laughs> the light is coming from over there. Why is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, all, all part of being better at our craft, and, and ultimately we all want to be better at our craft, is being able to look at an image, being able to look at a scene before it becomes an image, pre-visualize what it is, and decide what we need to do to it um, <clears throat> to make it tell the story we want or to make it powerful as we want it to be. Sometimes that means post-manipulation. Sometimes that means you know manipulating it in camera. Um, and sometimes that means recognizing things that aren't going to vibe with your viewer, you yeah. know, and mm -hmm. making those changes. So it's all part of the creative process, you know, yeah. it's, all, it's all part of that. I was pulling up, I was looking at the shots from the new community and trying to pick mm. a favorite while you were talking. Um, I don't I have know. You, do you have one? What's, what's your favorite? I, I, Nora's is my favorite. Norris, which one was Norris? This guy, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely my favorite. I mean, I love the I love the the nuts in the snow. I mean, that's definitely you know my runner up. But I think I think for the winter theme, I mean, this is unquestionably you know an epic winter scene. I just, I just really do. I really, really enjoy this. I think this is just a, a really wonderful image. So, love it. Very cool. All right, Nora, we'll go with that. Nora Zanotnis, you are this week's favorite. 
All right. Um, what's our next one? So normally we get to this point. I'm like, what's the next photo critique going to be? But we know what the next photo critique is going to be, right? Because it's we do. right here listed in photo critiques. <laughs> Look at that. Imagine that. We're using computers. Um, so, yeah. So the next one is Seascape. You want to tell us? You picked this one. So give us the deal on what you're looking for. I didn't for in pick this one. You did pick Seascape. Did I? Yes, you did. You gave me okay, a list. Okay, maybe I did. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. I don't yeah. remember. Age. Um, age. Okay, so we all know what the C is. S-E-A, not S-E-E. -E. So I'm, I'm being a smartass. No, I, look, so so uh, we may not all be near the ocean. Uh, hopefully we all have images that, that we can somehow play off of that. So um, we just haven't had this topic before. I just think mm -hmm. it's a it's a really wonderful topic and uh, love to see what everybody's able to do with it. Yeah, no, it should be interesting because I want to see, I want to see Scape um, because it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be the ocean or the sea right it could be a representation of that or something that inspires you i think what did i put in the notes here i said um and i say this in all of them your image can be literal abstract or other the only criterion is that you should think we should think of seascape when we look at it so right that's the challenge we got to think of seascape and what does that mean so i have a feeling you know, Joshua's going to render out a mermaid with seashells, right? <laughs> <Or something like that. laughs> yeah. So I know it's going. But yeah, that should be good. And then after that, the next one coming is columns, which should be also very interesting. So, oh, yeah. Columns are wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is, is that everybody can kind of see what's coming up. And instead of just getting a surprise and only having a week or two to work on it, um, you literally now have uh, over a month, like for household, which is on the 28th, that's a month away. And then we're going to be doing these every week, right? That's the goal yeah. for at least yeah. for a little while. Yep. 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 Every week we're going to, we're going back to our weekly cadence. I think the two weeks, the two week uh, waiting time but between each one was fine but it was it, the the energy and the immediacy dropped off i think so by having them every monday i think the immediacy is there it's always something coming up religiously every monday at this time or 12 pacific we'll be in here streaming this live so you can count on it just like you count on the meetups happening and i think it was craig stamfully i want to say had the suggestion of leaving the critique comments open for a time after the critique is recorded in case people want to have comments or post edited versions of the image to the to the comment thread on the previous critique so i'm going to do that oh, we'll yeah. try that out yeah we'll leave the critique thread open for this critique you know probably you know uh, i'm guessing and maybe sunday night of next week i'll shut it down and then you know everything becomes about the new critique at that point moving forward but just make oh, sure you yeah, don't, yeah. don't post your images for the the current critique in this one. And, you know, we should be good. They're smart. They know that, Frederick. Don't be condescending. <laughs> it's contagious. It is contagious. <laughs> the Troy Miller condescension. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys heard it. All right. Throw a hand up in the chat or something in the chat and acknowledge... <laughs> acknowledge la, 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 that la. troy miller has been condescending during this whole critique session go ahead yeah, hold him hold him to the fire uh, oh look the connection's not working yeah okay, uh, i'm boop. losing you troy's gone look at that uh what, what do you got going on this week man what's your what's on your agenda um I have a bunch of jobs to edit. Uh, we have some shoots and some wedding albums that we're working on um, that are coming through some orders. So I actually have some stuff to do, which is which is kind of cool. Um, no shoots, but just a lot of a lot of personal projects around here. I'm I'm diving deep into my older catalog, my catalog of images, and keeping them organized and just kind of going back and you know looking at my art, you know, trying to figure out what I like. I'm also really diving deep this year into chasing the moon. So I'm spending a lot of time on the, the photo ephemeris and mm. on that website, plotting where the moon's going to be and trying to find locations for it and figuring out how I'm going to shoot it. So I've been doing that. That's very cool. That's very cool. And I'm waiting. I'm in waiting mode for a 
Nikon ZZ62 with the kit 24 to 70 kit lens F4. So that should be here. Has that been ordered? Thursday. It's been ordered. I ordered, pulled the trigger yesterday. Yes. Pulled the trigger yesterday. I ordered it. I, I waited. I wanted to wait until that box of goodness that I sent to MPB had arrived successfully in their hands before I, <laughs> before I ordered the new one. So now they have it. I know that, you know. A, 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 some pennies will be showing up to offset the cost of this new camera so yeah yeah that that'll be great that'll be great so we'll have to get together yeah. and and go play with that i mean you know mono mono lake is as always waiting for me i'll i'm always there and that's not that far for you well check no. the pass as steven and i i don't i don't many of you might not know the story but i think it's three times now when i've been up in mammoth or i've been up at, at uh, mono lake or something um, Stephen Sharp's like, hey, I'll come out and meet you and we'll photograph. And then he drives for like eight hours trying to get over the pass and mm -hmm. he, gets, he can't make it through and he's got to turn back, you know. Um, yeah. So we still have to do that. Yeah, we still, yeah. Have to, we still have to make that happen in the next month or so. So Yeah, well, now, now I can join in now that I have a proper camera. Not that my old cameras weren't proper. Yes. They are. My cameras are all fantastic, and I still have um, I still I still have two micro four thirds bodies. I have this one, which is the box the box camera, the Panasonic BGH one, and I have a GH five um, that I have in the kind of studio room over there, all set up. Those are my two micro four thirds, and then I also have a Lumix S one full frame camera with a couple of full frame lenses for it. So those are hanging around until the roots take on this Nikon system. Just saying. So. Right. Well, I'm just going to let you know that uh, February 12th through the 15th is going to be the best time to shoot the moon. And March, uh, what, 14th through the 17th is going to be a really amazing time to photograph the moon. And it rises in some really cool places over Mono that uh, we'll have to we'll have to chase down. So. Yeah. What what focal lengths do you gravitate to for those kind of landscape with the moon in the scene shots? Four hundred. Yeah, I'm almost, mm -hmm. it's almost always always with my four hundred um, because I really want to. I really want that compression. But two two hundred to four hundred is kind of my favorite. Anything else, the moon gets really tiny. So, cool. All right. Yep. All right, folks, we're at the, we are at the top of the hour. That's the end of this creek, our, this critique, our very first live streamed 2022 inside the new community photo critique. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the in the uh, the comments inside the community. Go ahead and post your thoughts there. Um, what we did, wh or what we did great, what we could do better. Maybe it's Troy's sarcasm or something. I don't know, but <laughs> let us let us know what you think. And, you know, I'm always open to constructive criticism. So we will we will leave it right there. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks for joining into the chat. And we'll see you, hopefully see all of you guys on Friday at the TWIP Community Member Mixer Zoom. Leave it right there. Troy, thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Right. Have fun. Go take some photos. Capture Start some photons. Shooting. Yes. Capture them. See you guys.